obviously end of the season last game and uh what, um you had a few different options at your disposal and uh, what was the thought process behind getting short ridge to start tonight oh it just uh, like short ridge is ready to go we had uh, obviously parse fell ill there earlier in the week so shorty was you know feeling good had had a good game Sparks, he wanted to give the day, you know, he's, he's put in a lot of games and we got to this point, Shorty had had a great game already this week. So give him the opportunity there. And would you think it's fair to say that he was able to replicate that great performance from earlier in the week tonight? Yep, I thought he did a really good job. You know, we, we took on some water at different times and uh, he was finding pucks. He made a couple of big saves and uh, gave us a chance there, you know, took us to overtime. It was, it's a, it's a disappointing way to end that. Um, the guy's battling back. You want to find a way to get that extra point and end on a winning note for sure. All right. And, uh, you know, just kind of a, kind of a weird game uh, back and forth a little bit, but Manitoba carried the play, I would say, for most of it from my perspective. And, um, you know, what, what, what did you feel that your guys needed to uh, maybe, maybe didn't do so well today in, uh, in the final game of the year? Uh, we didn't exit well in the beginning of the game. I thought that we were slow in terms of our feet and our brains. Uh, just like, you know, they were on their toes more than we were. And we found that we were gaining pucks in our defensive zone, but we weren't turning that into a clean exit. We were getting caught from behind. We were making a play soon enough. And as a result, we were sort of getting stalled out. And so what happens is then you sort of, you put them in a position to just create more and more offense or, even have more ozone time. And we, as a result, don't get that much ozone time, so we couldn't generate. I thought that as the game wore on, we started to balance that out uh, better in the third period, but we gave them the leg up there. Eventually they scored. And um, as we've been seeing lately, it's tough for us to mount. We can mount a comeback, but we we're, we haven't been ripping off four and five goal games lately. So we got to minimize everything against. All right, thank you. All right, we'll go ahead to Paige. Hi, Kale. Um, today, when uh, Tolola scored the shorthanded goal there, um, I believe that's the only one you guys have on the season. How was kind of the reaction to that goal there? Guys were pumped. They were pumped for sure. Like, you know, we know that in the first half of the game, we were, like I said, we were sort of on our heels. We couldn't catch up to the game. But at the same time, Shortridge had played well, and we didn't lose faith. And the guys started to sort of turn the tables a bit uh, in the second half of the game. So to get rewarded with that goal, I thought that uh, guys were really fired up. Obviously, great play, E2 going to the net, and um, you know, put us in a position where we were feeling good. And I, I like our chances in overtime and shootouts, but fortunately, uh, Gustafson made a nice play there, and that was the end of it. Yeah, definitely. And um, now that things have kind of come to a close, uh, what do you feel your group got out of playing in the Canadian division this year? Well, I think that we got to, you know, you gain a lot of perspective when you see different teams, um, when you see different styles. And there is, I, I would say, when you look at the Manitobas and the Lavals of the Canadian division, they bring one style. Um, Toronto brings their own particular style in terms of the possession game they play. Belleville's really fast. I thought that we got a good array of competition in that respect. And we got pushed to the brink, obviously, by a really strong Laval team. Um, we've had good battles with Manitoba. And I think that it um, forced us, you know, it exposed us to a lot of, uh, a lot of good hockey in terms of good competition. And it also forced us to have to deal with teams on a long-term basis in terms of playing them back to back, back to back. And that is something that I think helps to guys to understand a little bit about how to compete in more of a playoff setting and how to make sure that you can bounce back from games. I think some of the series went, went well and then others didn't go well, but I, I think that you find a bit out about how a guy competes when he has to play the same team. And just last one for me, do you kind of looking back at these teams, um, you may not see them for quite some time now. Is there a team that you wish that your team got uh, one more chance at just uh, to wrap up the season here? 
Uh, no, you know what? I'd say all of them, but I do think we our record against Laval was not good, and it was a battle for us. So I'd love to play them again. I think that they're a great team, and I think um, when you get into situations like that, it makes you better. So um, I'd love to have them again because it just makes us better. We got to find a way to win. We got to find a way to adjust your game a little bit or play your game at a higher level. And I thought that we did that over the course of time against them. And, uh, and so that's where you have to appreciate good competition because it makes you better yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Patrick? Yeah, so Coach, uh, Matthew Phillips, obviously his bread and butter for much of his career has been uh, his passing game and ability to distribute the puck. Has there been a more of a conscious effort, though, uh, down the stretch to have him shoot the puck more and uh, take a little bit more of that aspect to his game? Well, I, I think our personnel has changed a little bit as we as we've moved from the beginning of the season. You know, through we've we've uh, had some players disappear due to injury or, or move up, and I think that Matthew has taken a little more on in that respect. But I think that he has um, he's he's always had this sneaky good shot, Patrick. He's good at placing it and he's good at getting it off quickly. And I know there's been a conscious effort on Matthew's behalf to make sure he continues to work and um, uh, improve his shot, improve the velocity. But, and I think that he he's found him as our, our cast of characters sort of changed a little bit over the course of the season. You can see him taking it more upon himself as opposed to being always the distributor. And then for a player in that situation, um, as a coach, do you have to – Try to guard against a player having to take on so much uh, when there has been a lot of personnel turnover and uh, not let it affect his game too much. Yep, you gotta you gotta watch. You know when you just yeah, the the old um, adage of just trying to mm -hmm. trying to do too much sometimes can run you into problems. Are you guys there? So I stopped there because it looked like you froze. But um, trying to, yeah, there's a, there's a time when uh, he would try to do too much. But at the same time, I thought that uh, his work ethic was consistently really, really strong. Had some great uh, phases to the season and uh, was there to the end for us in terms of trying to create and always, always trying to make some offenses in any way he could. And I think, you know, that's the kind of game that he needs to bring. He's not a dump and chase player. Um, and so we give him the freedom to make things happen and, and uh, try to find open space with the puck. Thank you. All right, got time for just a couple more for Kale. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, just one more for me. Um, obviously, lots of moving parts this season. One guy I just want to ask you about is CJ Lerby, um, just because yep. you've been without him for the last three games. I wasn't sure. I didn't think there was any injury I didn't hear about. Um, so was that just something that you wanted to get different looks in the lineup? Yep. It was a, a case where I just wanted to get some different looks in there. And some guys, uh, you know, that were in, in positions that um, we would we would slide CJ into and out of were just, you know, having some strong games. And we wanted to take another look at guys. We had a lot of looks at CJ. Um, and so it wasn't something where we wanted to keep him out, but we had a fair amount of D here. And so the last couple of games, he was out. And that, that's it. 